It'll take a second to go through, but. Okay, I'm being outside. I can't see what I'm showing you very well, so just give me feedback if I'm holding something up. All right, and we are good to go. Um, make sure that awesome. I'm actually on the correct page. Okay, so hi everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live part two with beekeeper Amy Owen, a Girl Scout volunteer. Um, are you a tubular, Amy? Or are you just a volunteer? Are you a tubular too or just a volunteer? Just a volunteer. Just a volunteer, okay. Um, I'm Charlie, I'm the camp director and the program manager for the Ardors Pillar for the Girl Scouts of New Mexico Trail. If you guys missed part one where we talked with Amy about like what beekeeping is, why it's important, how you can get involved, you can check that out on our YouTube or further down on our Facebook page. Um, so today, Amy is going to be taking, because the winds are down, yay, um, on a live hive inspection. Um, and she's also going to tell us what that is, like what a live hive inspection is. So thank you, Amy, again for doing a part two and a part one with us. Um, You're so welcome. What are we doing? So we're going to actually get into the hive today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually, you know what, when you're doing a hive inspection, what's cool is here's my hive um, and it's two boxes high. This is called a Langstroth hive and you can see the bees coming in and out of the entrance. Uh, super busy right now. Oh, here they come. Here's a bunch of ladies. But um, what's neat is before you get into the hive, you can kind of watch the bees on the outside of the hive. Nectar. Um, are they the drone male bees? Um, because it's late and past their um, mating season. So you can actually tell a lot about a hive by just watching the bees for a while at the entrance. But um, before I crack the hive open, the reason we beekeepers do hive inspections is because, um, well, basically you're looking at your hive's health and you wanna make sure they're clean, right? So you're making sure you either find the queen or eggs. Um, you're making sure you don't see any signs of disease or parasites. And um, yeah, you're just looking at the bees themselves and making sure they also look healthy and that there's good numbers and that they have enough um, food coming in. So this is called the top cover. Can you guys see me where I put you? Yes, uh, we can see you. Okay. And then this piece, is called the inner cover. I'm gonna bring you over so you all can see inside. So when you crack the cover to the hive, you can kind of immediately see one sign of health with your hive, which is the number of bees in the colony of the top. So can you see all those little bees? Yeah. So we have a good number of bees in the top box, which is good. And this top box is usually the honey super where they store all the honey. So we'll see if that's what they're doing up here. And if you guys are wondering, you can see that tool that she's using and she shows us a close in our video part one, she shows up a close up of the tool and kind of what, and talks to us about what it's used for. It's a multi-purpose tool for people. Okay. So this is a frame of honey or nectar. Um, nectar is what turns into honey. So can you all see that? See all the bees on the frame? Yeah, that's a lot of bees. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually not a ton. When we get into the brew, you'll see more on the frame, hopefully. But um, yeah, there's like 60,000 bees in a colony. So anyways, can you see the cappings on this frame? 
Yeah, the little parts that look lighter colored. Yeah, it's like waxy. So what the bees do is they get nectar from flowers and then they come back to the hive and give that nectar to another bee. Sorry, I had a call coming in. Okay, I was like, where'd she go? <laughs> I know, not cool. So um, they give the nectar to another bee and then that second bee places that nectar in the cell and then they use their wings to fan the nectar and lower the water content and that's when it becomes honey and then they'll cap it when it's done to further like preserve and store it so that's a honey frame and then I'll just for the sake of time I'm gonna go ahead and get into the brood box which is where the queen is and where she's laying all of the baby bees And then I wrote it down into the chat for you guys while she's doing that. Um, if you are joining us, please remember to comment your name, um, your Girl Scout level, if you're a Girl Scout and where you're from. Um, and also if you guys have any questions, you can type them into the chat and we'll do our best to get to those at the end when we're done with the live hive inspection. And then this obviously is my smoker. They get a little more testy when you get the brood box. But that helps calm the bees down. Um, and also if you guys have any questions, So what do you think is in this frame? Are those, are those the babies, the eggs? Or is that just more honey? No, I was hoping you could see some color, but there's a lot of different colors of pollen in this frame. And what's neat is um, the bees collect pollen and pollen is mixed with nectar to feed the baby bees. It's called bee bread. And so when you come across a frame of pollen like this, you're often gonna see baby bees on the next frame. So we'll go ahead and go to the next one. And yeah, if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask. Um, I wear gloves so that I don't spread disease from one hive to the other. They're like nitrile gloves, so I always switch them. I know we've got some people who are coming and going in the in the Facebook live. So if you guys um, missed the beginning, we do have a part one video um, that is way further down on our news feed for the Facebook page, or you can find it on our YouTube or on the In and Girl Scouts blog. Um, if you guys want to watch part one, where Amy talks about the different tools that you use as a beekeeper, um, how to become a beekeeper, how to help out if you want to learn more about it or give back, and also kind of like what beekeepers do and why these are important. I lost her momentarily, but she'll be back. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I always have to check and make sure, so, I'm, did I actually lose her or did I just lose her video? <laughs> no, you didn't lose me, it was another call. I should have like blocked that. But anyways, this is a very happening frame. Do you see all the how there's more bees on this frame than yeah, the honey frame? Yeah, twice as many bees as on the last one you showed us. Yeah, so all of these bees are nurse bees that are taking care of brood in the brood nest. Um, and this is a bunch of capped brood. I don't know if you can see how it looks kind of like a paper covering. Mm -hmm. But there's baby bees underneath that papery looking wax that are going to emerge soon. And so when I'm looking at that, I'm making sure it looks like it's not sunken in, that there's no um, perforations, because those can both be signs of disease. And so far, it looks really good um, and healthy. I don't see the queen yet, but I do see this is an awesome brood pattern. You see how solid 
those cappings are on the ground. There's not a lot of so holes in between. Right. And that's a sign that you have a good um, laying queen. So that's exciting. And this queen came from um, Santa Fe. So it's local. So that's cool. Um, it's always good to get local beads when you can and also help other local beekeepers. Um, but what's neat about this frame is it's basically like picture perfect. So you have brood in the middle, some younger brood that's not capped yet. And then you have some pollen around it. Remember that's their food for the baby bees. And then you have nectar around that. So it's just a really good, healthy frame to show you guys. I'm glad your bees are so healthy too. Um, and we did have two questions that were kind of similar. I think one of them you answered, but we should we can run it again. Um, but we have Crystal um, asked, where do the baby bees live? So they, you know, how you were talking about how they live in the little cells. And then how does the queen bee lay her eggs? Good question. So let me go to the next frame because we might see her. Um, and then while I have the next frame, I'll answer that question. Sorry to everybody who sees that I had somebody coming in the front door. <laughs> um, so when they're babies, when they're eggs and then those are like the baby quote stages. Oh, there's the queen. I had a feeling. See her? I want you, so your video is frozen right now. So if you, I want to wait a second because I do want to see the, the queen. I don't know why but, <laughs> but what the queen does to answer that question is she, the eggs come out of the back of her abdomen. Oh my goodness. Hold on a second. Technical difficulties. That's fine. That's the world we live in now. Right? How's that? So your video is back, but it's still a little frozen. Let me make, oh. let me check on the Facebook page. Sorry everybody for our technical difficulties. <laughs> you your okay. stuck on your feet well that's not a good place um maybe we can do you want to try turning it off and then turning it back on that's all we yeah let me off. set this frame okay. of these down okay <laughs> somebody says good old east mountain cell phone reception <laughs> uh, it's true i was worried about that okay let's see Stop video, start video. Can you see now? Yes, yes. And I think you're moving too. Okay. Oh, but you're moving. This is what we get for living in New Mexico where everything is so far apart. <laughs> right. Okay, I think you're back because I can see movement again. Okay. So let me get that frame again. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Like you're in an old school video game. <laughs> so that happened like right when I found the queen. It's because she, she's... Want, it's she didn't want us to see her. I guess so. She actually is kind of hiding. She's up here amongst all the other bees, um, trying to move them out of the way. I don't know if you can see her, but she's right here. She's longer, so her wings look shorter. There she goes across the frame. 
And um, the way she lays an egg is she sticks the end of her abdomen. She's actually sticking it up towards us right there. She sticks the end of her abdomen all the way into the bottom of the cell, which is, if you think about it, it's a long ways down there. And she has the long abdomen to do it. And once she gets her, oh, she's in a cell laying an egg right now. What? That's wild. Yeah, I wish you guys could see. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But anyways, her abdomen, she just laid an egg. She had her abdomen all the way down in that cell and she'll lay the egg in the bottom and center of the cell. And um, yeah, she's an yeah, awesome think, queen. So I think we're having, I think we're, so you're on, on my Zoom screen, I can see you moving, but it looks like we've got some people commenting that we're frozen on the, right now you're frozen where you're pointing at the queen so that's a good one but we're a little bit frozen on the, the video again. Okay. So I hope, well, I hope that answers your question about like how she lays the egg. I'm actually gonna get her back in the hive um, so I don't keep her out too long. But since we do, so while you're doing that, since we do still have you on sound, even if we don't necessarily have you on video, um, if you guys do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, <clears throat> we've got about 10 more minutes uh, for this one because we were just going to go for 30 minutes today. And then hopefully we'll be able to um, save the video and it won't be frozen. Uh, and if it is, we will be nice enough to try again <laughs> with us. Yeah, the video is still frozen, but we, we can hear you. Your audio is still good. Okay, so I've seen a lot of the things I need to see for my hive inspection, like the, I've seen the queen, and I know she's laying, um, what else? I see that the brood looks healthy. Um, I see that the bees aren't showing any signs of disease. Um, and the queen has room to lay more baby bees. You always want to make sure she has room to um, lay and expand or that can stimulate swarming, which is when the bees um, basically reproduce and create another hive. The old queen will leave with a bunch of workers. Sorry, I'm picking up heavy boxes. <laughs> um, when they swarm, the old queen leaves with a bunch of, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. She'll leave with a bunch of workers and then the bees that are left behind raise a new queen. So that's their kind of natural way of reproducing. But as a beekeeper, you don't want to lose a whole colony of bees. So you're always trying to um, prevent them from swarming by giving them enough space um, so they don't want to leave. Cool. And then we actually, that kind of ties into a question because somebody um, asked in the chat, how does the queen bee become the queen? So is she born that way or does she become a queen after being a different kind of bee? I love this question because I'm thinking of that song. <laughs> um, so they're born that way as a queen. Um, so they emerge a queen, but the only difference between a queen and a female worker bee is what they're fed. It's super interesting. Um, so the first three days, um, the egg remains. And if it's fed only royal jelly after that third day, um, the genetic, the way the genes react, they create um, a queen bee. If they're only fed exclusively the royal jelly, which is excreted from um, the mouths of worker bees, um, it's like super rich in protein. Um, and then if it's fed, if that egg after day three is fed the bee bread, like I was talking about earlier, which is a mixture of pollen and honey, um, then they'll turn into a female worker bee. So it's really interesting because the hive has some, I mean, they have a lot of say in whether that egg turns into a female worker bee or a female queen bee. So it's very, very interesting. 
very different from our human um, genetics and reproduction. Yeah. Uh, that's just a funny question. Is that why they call it royal jelly? Because it yeah. turns them into queen bees? That's really funny. Uh, so we've got a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, so awesome. We've got a couple people. So we've got like three people asking, how do you get your bees? So, like, where did you get your bees from? Um, and how do you keep them? And then somebody was also asking, can bees get sick? So how did I get my bees? I think you said something after that, but I didn't hear you. <laughs> um, um, but how, like, how do you get your bees? And how many, like, can you keep it one time? So how many hives can you keep it one time? And also, can bees get sick? Okay, yeah, good question. So I get most of my bees from um, local swarms or local splits. Um, and a split is basically when you take a colony that you already have and you split it into two. And so basically it's like making an artificial swarm. Um, so you're using them to reproduce and make that other hive rather than waiting for them to do it themselves. And then a swarm is bees that have already done that. So they've left their hive. And um, sorry, I'm out of breath because I was walking back up to my house. <laughs> um, so they've already left their hive um, and landed on a tree nearby. And they're looking for a new hive location. And us beekeepers, we love that because we can go and get that cluster of bees from a tree and put them in a hive box and start a new colony. Um, but you can also order um, packages of bees um, or you can get nukes, so small boxes of bees from like local suppliers. Um, but I always recommend going local because there's less chances of committing diseases from other places and you're just supporting um, people nearby. So, and then as far as how many hives you can keep, that really depends on how much time you have. Um, I manage about 25 hives right now and um, trying to think about how many hours a week I'm with the bees. I spend quite a bit of time with them, um, maybe like six to 10 hours a week, depending on what's going on um, with 25 hives. So it's not a ton of time because you don't want to be in a hive like for a very long time. And then do bees get sick? Yes. In fact, they get sick a lot. And that's a huge problem we as beekeepers face um, is keeping our bees healthy. And some of the ways, well, the main way bees get sick is um, pathogens that are spread by the varroa mite. So the varroa mite is um, a parasite that came from Asia when the Asian honeybee was introduced to North America. I think it was in the 80s or 90s. I should know that. I think late 80s, early 90s. But um, it brought with it the varroa mite and they attach themselves to a honeybee and they feed on the fat bodies of the honeybee and they also transmit things like deformed wing virus, um, what else? Just a bunch of um, viruses and pathogens. Um, and then bees can also get things like European fowl brood from other honeybees, um, American fowl brood, sock brood, sack brood. So there's just a lot um, that goes along with um, honeybees and disease um, control and prevention. So. Unfortunately, if you're a beekeeper in um, North America, you're spending a lot of time monitoring your um, mite levels and trying to keep them low, so. Yeah, so that's, and that's why beekeepers, that's one of their important jobs, right? To make sure that bees help stay healthy, to help the bees stay healthy. Right, yeah, yeah. And it's pretty tricky these days. I would say it's, beekeeping's a lot different than it was like 30 years ago when we didn't have such a, big issue with um, mites, so okay. unfortunately. So we've got two, so I'm gonna go, we're gonna do three more questions. Um, so we've got two that are related to honey and then we've got one that's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> one that's kind of funny is they wanna know, are there king bees? <laughs> I love it. So the only 
uh, males in a honeybee colony are what are called the drones. And the drones come from an unfertilized egg. So the queen actually has the ability to decide whether she's going to lay an egg that's fertile or one that's um, not fertile. And if it's not fertilized, that egg she's laying, it'll turn into a male bee, which is a drone. And the only purpose of a drone bee or the male bee, which they can't sting, by the way, um, their only purpose is to go find a queen and try to mate with her and spread the genetics of um, that colony. So that's why you see them kicking out drones, um, like I was saying, in the late summer, early fall, even late spring, you'll start seeing them kind of kick out the drones. So, um, but yeah, I love that. Is there a king bee? <laughs> <laughs> bees are just so different uh, from us. The, the two honey ones kind of go together. So they want to know, how do you get the honey? And do you eat a lot of honey? Okay, hilarious. I actually don't really like honey, which might be a good thing because I don't take too much from my bees. But um, it depends on what kind of hive you have um, when you're extracting the honey. So if you have a Langstroth hive, like you saw me open up, um, you... The best way to take the honey out is to put it in an extractor in an extractor and like spin it really fast so that the honey is flung out of the cells onto the wall of the extractor and then it runs down to the middle of the extractor at the bottom and then you can drain the honey out and filter it however you would like and put it in jars but if you have like a topper hive where it's honey in comb that can't be spun around um what a lot of us beekeepers do is we call it the crush and strain method. So we get that honeycomb and we literally crush it and then strain that honey through um, a honey filter and then put it in jars. So it really just depends on um, what kind of comb or frame you're trying to get the honey out of. And then we're gonna do one last live question. Um, and then there were a couple of additional questions in the chat, um, but we can okay. answer those afterwards. Um, so our last live question is going to be, where did it go? My chat moved. <laughs> uh, how do bees sleep? So bees do sleep. This is like pretty new um, research. And what's funny is like, just like us, they're busy during the day and then they're back in their hive at night. And they're all in there snug together. Um, and basically they just don't move, they stay still, they all hang out on the comb. Um, but as far as like the physiological details of bee sleep, I can't really answer that because I don't really know like the complexities of it, but I do know that bees at night are in their hive and they're resting and they're pretty much staying still unless it's winter and they're vibrating their flight muscles to create warmth in the hive, so. Really cool. All right, so just um, for everybody who is still on with us, we're with Amy Owen, who is a Girl Scout volunteer in the East Mountains. Um, she did a part one with us talking about what beekeeping is, why beekeeping is important, how you can get involved in helping bees or being a beekeeper, um, and kind of about the tools that beekeepers use. And then today we just went on a really quick hive inspection. Uh, we did run into some technical difficulties, so hopefully the video comes out okay. Um, and we will be posting that to our site. Um, but she showed us a couple of frames in, in one of her hives, so she has 25 of them, and we looked at the claim, and also we got to see the um, Hello. You guys will this video later. We'll try and get through the questions that you guys have in comments before them. Else, you want to add Amy? Don't your video for a second.
Can you hear me, Molly? Can you hear me, Molly? I can't hear you. It's because I muted it. Yes, and your video was back for a second too. Um, Zoom. Okay. I think my internet is trying to tell me that I need to stop live streaming. <laughs> Um, but essentially we should be back soon. Hopefully we're already back. Um, cause the, the Facebook live, the Facebook live stream never stops. Um, but I was thanking everybody and letting them know about the part one video. And then I was asking if there was anything additional that you wanted to add. If you can hear me. <laughs> and I will also link the um, the YouTube video if, if it's up on YouTube, otherwise it's down below on our Facebook page. <laughs> so Amy says and now she's having, so I guess that is it. We're just having a couple of technical difficulties today. Uh, so she can't hear me or us which is fine, um, but thank you guys for joining us. And like I said, check out part one to learn about what being a beekeeper is like and why it's important. Um, and also don't forget to check out the nmgirlscouts.org Girl Scouting at Home page for other activities that we're gonna be highlighting, other live events and all of our camp that we're having this summer. So, you know, we've got STEM, we've got entrepreneurial, we've got outdoors and we've got life skills. So thank you Girl Scouts.